Alright, so welcome back to another lesson. In this lesson, we will talk about um, how can we craft more complex prompts. Well, well, I mean, you already know the concepts since we've discussed them with you in that uh, lecture where I showed you all of the types of the prompts. But, I mean, it's always easier to remember when you experiment and when you, uh, when you have some real examples. So let's go ahead and have some real examples because I love real examples. Um, let's start with a complex prompt that is uh, open-ended, all right? So in the last example, the uh, last time we had this prompt in the past lesson where we have asked ChatGPT for a trivial fact, let's, let's do the same thing. So provide me with a trivial fact that few people know about this is a simple is this is still a simple prompt it is open-ended but how do we make it complex well it's simple we add details only one detail that um, can change the whole outcome uh, can make this prompt complex so the detail I will add is the following topic and I will say that the topic is astronomy. Uh, and if I hit enter, I will get something else. Astronomy fact, the dwarf planet Haumea, located in the Kuiper belt, has such a rapid rotation that a day on its surface lasts only about 3.9 Earth hours. These extreme rotations causes Haumea to be shaped like an elongated ellipsoid, making it one of the most uniquely shaped objects in our solar system. Interesting fact. So, um, here we have a open-ended complex prompt. By adding this detail, we made it a complex prompt. Now you can make it very complex by making it, by adding more details. Uh, but as I told you about the complex complex prompts, um, we'll go into them a bit later. Uh, and why you should not use complex complex prompts, so very complex prompts. Uh, you'll realize why a bit later. Right now it might seem, uh, you know, counterintuitive or even stupid. So don't focus on that. Let's move on. We have um, the open-ended complex prompt. Let's go ahead with the closed-ended complex prompt. And so in the last example with the simple prompt, I, show, I showed you how um, a closed prompt was, ha has given me the answer that Paris is the capital of France. Now, <clears throat> let's type that same prompt again. What is the capital of France? But this time I will make a change. All right, so if I, if I think about this, I have an idea, a new idea. Is the capital of France... Paris, London, or uh, let's say Berlin. So um, this is a closed ended prompt that is complex because I also add conditions here. Basically, I give options to ChatGPT. I don't only ask ChatGPT the question, I also give ChatGPT some options to choose from. So I go even further to limiting its ability to be creative. I mean, of course, it will not be creative in this case, but by giving ChatGPT options, you go even further, further and you can consider this um, complex, close, and that prompt. And let's hit enter, and we will get the following answer. The capital of France is Paris. And that's it. I mean, easy as that. Now, I hope these ex this examples helped you understand more clearly uh, the difference between complex and simple prompts and the difference between closed-ended and open-ended prompts. Uh, because we will mostly use um, complex open-ended prompts since they're the most uh, useful in most cases. But it depends. There are some uh, exceptions. I always you tend to use open-ended complex prompts uh, maybe because it's what I tend to use ChatGPT for the most 
if I had a different, if I was in a different industry, maybe it wasn't this case, but I don't think so. Uh, honestly, most people I know tend to use as well complex and open ended prompts. Um, and they're the hardest to harness, they're the hardest to learn how to create because they're the most complex, right? So, um, this is it pretty much with this lesson. I hope you found it helpful and interesting. See you in the next one.